video, I'm going to talk through how you answer the 12 mark interpretation question on the Norman paper. <coughs> now, this question is actually really quite easy, but I think sometimes students worry about it. So I'm going to start with the basics and I'm going to move my way through. First off, this question focuses on interpretation, so I'm going to stop for a second before I look at the question to talk about the differences between a source and an interpretation, so you understand really clearly what an interpretation is. You might know this already, and I hope you do, but a source is always written at the time. It is something from the time period that we are studying. So if it was the Normans, it would be a source written during the Norman reign or very shortly after it. An interpretation is something that is written a long time after the period of time that it is writing about. So, for example, if I wrote something about the Second World War, 60, 70, 80 years later, that would be an interpretation. It is a conscious construction of a past event. Let's look at what types of things might be sources and what types of things might be interpretations to understand that a little bit clearer. So a source, as I said, is something written at the time that tells us about that time. So it could be a painting, a diary extract, a report, a newspaper extract, a photograph, or if we're looking at the Normans, could be a chronicle, something that a monk has written, or a song about that particular battle or person that we are studying. They are things from that time period. An interpretation is something very different. As I said, it's about written way after the time, looking back on that time period. So it could be a history book, it could be a painting, a film, a children's book illustration or a children's book. It could be a novel, it could be a website. There are lots of different interpretations and lots of different sources. The thing you need to think about with sources and interpretation, though, always really is what is that source or interpretation trying to do, its purpose, and who is it aimed at, its audience? Let's focus in on this question and the interpretations at hand. <coughs> question on this paper will always be phrased in this way. Interpretations B and C are both interpretations of, and they'll give you a topic. So it could be Norman Castles, or it could be the Battle of Hastings, or it could be Herald with the Wake, or it could be the Doomsday Book. So there will be two interpretations on the same topic. So his interpretations B and C are both interpretations of. This is the key bit. How far do they differ and what might explain any differences? So this question is a long way of asking you two things. In this first half of the question here, it's asking you how far do they differ? How are they similar? How are they different? That's easy. In the second half of the question, it's asking you why. So in this question, you need to answer two things. How they differ and why they differ. And that's really important. How they differ and why they differ. And that leads us into a really clear structure for this 12 mark question. And this should be a structure that really is about one page long. One page in total. So these are going to be three short-ish paragraphs. Paragraph one, all I want you to do in that first paragraph is explain how B and C are similar. B is similar to C because they've both got this kind of feature. B is similar to C because they're both presenting this in the same way. In paragraph two, you then look at how B and C are different. However, on the other hand, B and C are a little different. B's got this in it that C hasn't. And then finally, in the third paragraph, you suggest why they might be different. So really simple, three paragraphs, similar, different, why? Let's look at an example so that we understand that a little bit clearer. This example was on the sample paper for the Normans unit. And it says, interpretations B and C are both illustrations of Norman Mott and Bailey castles. How far do they differ and what might explain any differences? Now, these B and C here might be a bit small, so I'm going to make them a bit bigger. So interpretation B is an illustration of the Norman castle at Pickering in Yorkshire, 
by the reconstruction artist Simon Hayfield. The illustration is in the book Picturing the Past. The book was published in 1997 and was aimed at adults. And in this picture, you can see a dark, gloomy scene with the Mott and Bailey Castle there quite clearly and the Mott there and the little tower on top of it. And you can see some Norman soldiers at the bottom. Interpretation C is a similar but also quite different picture. And this is an illustration of a typical Norman castle in Living in the Past, the Middle Ages. <coughs> a history textbook written for primary school children in 1983. Okay, so we've got two images here. And all we need to do is explain how far they differ and what might explain the differences. And again, it's really simple in terms of its structure. Paragraph one, why are they similar? Paragraph two, why are they different? Paragraph three, sorry, paragraph two, how are they different? Paragraph three, why are they different? Let's look at paragraph one. So paragraph one, how are they similar? Well, both of these images are really similar because they both show the key features of a Norman castle. For example, I can see palisades or the fence that sits around the castle very clearly in both. In both, I can see a Norman tower on top of the mot, and I can see a mot very clearly in both. They both show the strength of these Norman castles and how imposing they must have been on an English countryside. You could see from both of these images how terrifying these must have been. But the pictures are quite different. B is a lot more gloomy and a lot more kind of terrifying than C. And C is a quite a different castle from B. C is made of stone, not wood. Using my own knowledge, I know that that must be a later castle because the initial Norman castles were made of wood. Also, B is different because in B, I cannot see the full bailey. I can mostly only see the mot. And again, I know that wasn't surprising because some of those initial Norman castles were only just the mot. They weren't always a mot and a bailey. And you'll notice there that I'm using the phrase, this is not surprising. And I think this is not surprising is a really important phrase to use in this 12 mark question because it allows you to bring in your own knowledge, which is super important. So paragraph one and two, I've now written probably about two thirds of a page. I've looked at the how, now I need to look at the why. So in paragraph three, I look at why are they different? And they're different because they're really written for different audiences. The audience of C is primary school children. That's why they've made it look more cheerful. That's why it's not so crucial that it gets all of that historical accuracy right. Whereas B is aimed at adults who would want to make more accuracy. They would want this to be as accurate as they possibly could. However, both of these images are similar in their terms of their purpose, because they are both designed to educate. So you will have noticed here that in that last paragraph, I talked about audience and purpose. Just to summarise at the end, really, really simple. 12 mark questions are actually dead simple. They're about a page long, three short paragraphs. One paragraph, how are those two interpretations similar? One paragraph, how are those two interpretations different? One paragraph, why are they different? Good luck.